good morning and welcome back to another video it feels like an absolute eternity since i was last on the bank fishing and actually making and producing a video for you guys i'm really cold my face is really cold as well at the moment so it's about half seven in the morning um and i'm out fishing absolutely buzzing it's the first time i've done some proper piking for well almost a year now um absolutely fantastic and i'm i'm buzzing as you can tell just in my voice i'm really 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 buzzing um the rods are out i will show you a little bit later on where i am as you probably guessed from the title you'll probably realize where i am and um yeah like i say i'll give you a little look around later uh, show you the swim show you where i'm fishing um i'm absolutely buzzing and uh Fingers crossed that I can get a few fish under my belt today. I don't care what size they are. Like I say, it's been since last uh, October, November, since last I had a fish, and that was 11 pound three ounce. Um, and like I say, I've not had a fish since um, pike wise. And I've been pike out, I've been out pike fishing in the uh, summer months, as you probably guessed, uh, and you've probably seen from previous videos, doing a little bit of surface fishing on my local ponds. But this winter, I have a new place to fish as well as the ponds but probably going to spend more time on this venue so like i say a little bit later on i'll give you a little bit of a look around the, the swim that i'm fishing i'll show you the tactics i'm using uh and this is a new series basically which i'm going to call the monastery piking diaries and i'm really excited for it really really excited for it this fishing is now for me um I'm one of 25 members on this lake, uh, 26 members on this lake, I'm the, I'm the 26th member and I'm practically, practically the only person um, who pikes, who's going to be piking up here. There are other anglers that do a little bit of piking from time to time but not to the level of the amount of times I want to fish up here and do it. And like I say, last year uh, I never really got to fish up here um, through various different reasons which I'm sure you're probably bored of me covering, mainly health issues uh, and uh, everyday work stuff. I'm watching my rods at the moment, so I've got them just out in front of me. Like I said, I'll, I'll give you a little look later, show you what I'm doing, but I'm buzzing. So fingers crossed, early morning, hopefully the pike are on the feed. And it's really so exciting, it's untapped fishing. It's untapped. It's not, it's the unknowing of what's in here. Because even the, the bailiff and the other members don't really know pike wise what's in here. Anyway, I'm going to shut up with Tui. I'm going to do a little bit of fishing now. Like I say, the rods are out. I'm just settled down. Just chill out, soak in the atmosphere, get used to my new venue and um, my new club water. I call it my new club water because I've only ever done one session up here since uh, I joined last year. And that was uh, to try and catch some perch, but end up getting plagued with loads of big silver fish for. For live baits, I was catching good roach, good quality stamp roach. I don't, I didn't want to use for pike, and even then, uh, I feel a little uncomfortable using big roach for pike, um, even for catfish in the summer months. If I'm being honest, um, and I was trying to catch little small ones for perch, and uh, yeah, I was, <laughs> I could, I, I couldn't seem to catch small ones. So we'll see, we'll see. I will do a bit of live baiting up here because I, I ha only have two rules up here. Uh, well, there are other rules, but two rules that I need to abide by, which is no braid. I'm not allowed to use braid in this venue, and also um, no lures, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, they want to protect their carp because it is quite a small venue. Again, I will show you later. They probably don't want me foul looking on carp, uh, which is understandable. I have to abide by rules, but I would love to pull some lures through these swims because I think I'd, I'd have a hat for if I'm being honest. Anyway. Fingers crossed. Let's see what stocking density is in here, pike-wise. I'm gonna chill, relax back, and I'll come back to you, hopefully with a fish in my hands. But if not, I'm gonna show you around the venue anyway, and show you my swim and have a little talk about where I am. Keep watching, fingers crossed, and I'm buzzing. Yeah! Right, so I've had my first pike. It's only a little jack at the moment. Uh, I was told there was plenty of these little guys in here, probably about a pan and a half, two pan pushing it. But yeah, it's only a little bubba, but it's my first fish in nearly, nearly a year. So it's absolutely fantastic and first in my venue. 
So uh, didn't give me too much of a scrap. Took a, uh, a smelt fish that probably three quarter depth up in the water. Um, go to rig, very easy to, to catch fish on that particular method. Um, and let's see what sort of numbers are in here today because I've had one drop run and I've had this little, uh, this little uh, fella. So let's get him back and let him grow on to be a bigger fish. But he's absolutely beautiful. He's got lovely markings. And like I say, these fish are untapped. So let's get him back and uh, see if we can catch ourselves another one. So one nil, first blood to me. Fantastic. Let's get him back. Just going to give this little fella a little bit of recovery time. He's not been out on the bank too long. He was very easy to unhook. Let's just hope we can find his grandmother, eh? Oh, he's kicking away, showing good signs. Always rest your fish, guys. Like I say, this fish has been out no more than a minute and a half for me to unhook it. Let's do a quick bit to camera. Lovely little fella. Here he goes. Down to have a sulk. Yes! First blood to me. On my first fish for a long time. Keep an eye on the other rod. Let's get that rod baited up and get back in. Right folks, so I've had my second fish. Uh, £8.4 over the moon absolutely fantastic again beautiful colors absolutely lovely let's get a second fish now um, it's still early on in the morning I'm not entirely sure what time it is I'll have to double check but yeah this one took the sardine on the bottom uh, which was a, a float ledger rig um, so yeah this one picked up off the bottom I was actually reading in the other rod and I saw this one go um, hooked them perfectly both times so yeah over the moon with that one but uh what a start to the piking diaries eh what a start absolutely fantastic new water as well right let's get this little fella back so he can grow on to be an even bigger one just need to find his grandmother now fantastic okay so while well, i've got that fish resting in the net I may as well show you what I've been using tackle wise and set up. Now, it might be a little bit overkill for such a small water. Um, I've got my three pan test curve boat rods, not that I boat fish. Uh, they're in a, a Fox Rage Predator rod, which I've added my own decal on. You guys may have seen before. Uh, matte finish, lovely rod, cheap as chips. I think I paid about 55 quid each for them. Um, but you can get these for around 65 roughly give or take now that's coupled with a GTE 5000 double handle I've had these rules for about 20 years uh, I originally bought them for barbel fishing but again I've not been out for barbel so um, they've literally stayed tucked away and I've rarely used them so they're practically brand new um, my 8000s I've now retired and I used them left right and center uh, i've had some really good uh, fish out of them over the years the gte version of the 8000s i've now replaced them with uh, the more modern up-to-date bait runners you feel the difference you really do feel the quality but you still can't beat the old reels in my opinion that's a uh, 15 pound invisitech uh, i think it's invisitech um, shimano line Personally, if I had my option and my choice, I wouldn't use monofilament as much anymore. But unfortunately, a lot of the places I fish, venue-wise, you can't fish anything other than monofilament. Like I said earlier on, this one hasn't, this this water hasn't got a braid. Uh, it's got a braid ban, so you're not allowed to use braid even as a predator angler. So yeah, 15 pound monofilament. I hope I don't live to regret it. <laughs> um, that's set with a stop knot. 
uh, which is just a, a fox, red fox, uh, rubber stop knot. You can use any type of stop knot. Uh, then I've got a bead, a small red bead uh, that runs up to the stop knot. I've got a small fox uh, bubble float, not bubble float, a stubby, stubby slider type of plastic bubble float. You can't buy these anymore. Um, there's still loads knocking about. I think uh, Gray's Prowler make them still, or very similar to that, so you can buy them type of floats. Personally, it won't be long before I start using my own floats. I still haven't made a set for myself uh, that are usable. Uh, I seem to be uh, making them for everyone else bar me at the moment. But such a lovely little water like this, I maybe have to knock a set up specially for this water um, and call them the monastery, put a monastery logo on them. Um, so yeah, that's the float. I've uh, got a large bore run ring. Because I'm using monofilament, I'm using a plastic large bore run ring. If I was using braid, I tend to use a metal large bore run ring that I use for my catfishing. Um, there's a buffle bead that goes down to a, uh, a link swivel so I can take the trace off. The traces I make myself as a predator angler. Not many anglers I know who fish for, don't fish for pike, don't make their own traces. That's 18 inches long. I don't go any shorter than that unless it's for a pattern oster. Uh, it's two size six trebles, which are the Esox Drenum trebles that I've always used. The make of the, the, the trace wire um, is a little bit incidental, but I like using plastic coated trace wire personally. Uh, again, this is the, uh, the Esox from, um, uh, from Drenum, and it's 28, no, it's 28 or 40. I think it's in the 40s. It's around, it's 40 plus, I know that. I haven't got the lighter trace wire on. Uh, probably about two and a half inches between the trebles. I don't like a big gap personally, I like a smaller gap. And um, and yeah, I've got uh, little crimp sleeves that go over the top. These are crimp by the way, I don't like twisting my wire. Um, sorry about the motorbike, there's a college just behind me. Um, and there's a, uh, and there's um, uh, the, the, the crimp trace uh, sleeves that go over the top. So. And I had that on a sardine, a whole sardine. I didn't do anything to it, I didn't inject it, I didn't uh, put any oils into it or any flavourings or anything like that. And that's the setup really that I caught that fish on. So the fish is resting in the net. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release it now. So I'll take you over there and show you it. Okay, so I've had this pike resting for about, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes maybe, five minutes. Just come to check on it, make sure it's fine before I release it. Absolutely beautiful camouflage colours, making sure it's, uh, there we go, it's starting to kick now. That's what we're looking for, we were looking for it to start kicking. I'm just going to drop the net down, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful little one. So, absolutely made up with that. That's two pike now, one drop run. So we had a little two pounder to start us off with, and then we had... An eight pound four, which is fantastic. So it's just a double now, really. And like I say, I'll show you around the swim in a little while because it's absolutely beautiful. So let's get rigged up, get the bait rods back out there, and hopefully we'll have another one. Bait time, I suppose. It's around sort of quarter past 11 ish now. Um, so, just recapping what's happened really. So, I've had an, uh, 
I've had a drop run when I first got here, uh, and that was on a ledged, uh, well, float ledged um, sardine. Then I've had a two pounds jack. Uh, I'll show you the swims in a little while. So I had a two pound jack, and that was uh, that was a nice little nice little fish to start off with. Uh, quite a thin fish, but a pretty fish nonetheless. And then literally half an hour, 45 minutes ago, I had an eight pound four, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm over the moon. Uh, I couldn't be more happier than having come to this place. I cannot believe I've not put the time in here before, not just for pike, but for anything. Um, I know those fish are not record beaters or record breakers, but it's not always about that, is it? And the older I'm getting, the more it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the big one. It's eluded me for so many years. When it comes, it comes. Um, so yeah, I'm over the moon. And I'm sure it's very untapped in here, as I said before. There are a few anglers at Fisher Pike. There's a gentleman just across the water from me who's introduced himself. All the members so far that have introduced themselves to me uh, have been really nice people um, that I've met so far. Really pleasant, polite, lovely people, which makes it even more of a, a pleasure to fish here. So yeah, he introduced himself to me. Um, the bailiff told me when I was walking around the lakes last year um, that there was a fella that did a bit of piking on here, uh, alongside other types of fishing, not just carping, but other types of fishing. And uh, yeah, he was the guy I met. And like I say, he's piking the other side of the water to me, just on the opposite bank. And uh, I think he had between 20 and 30 pike last season. Nothing bigger than seven pounds something or other. Uh, so him seeing a, an eight pound four just come out, it's probably given him a little bit more hope that there's some bigger fish in the water. Now the bailiff last year said that there was a 14 pounder that come up out of here a few years ago to a carper. I think there is a great number of pike in this water, just, just from the amount of interest I've had so far already. And that's just using dead baits. I imagine if I had live baits on or lures, no, I'm not allowed to use lures, as I said. But if I was to use lures and I was allowed to use them, um, alongside live baits, which I am allowed to use, I'm sure I'd clear up here, really, to be honest. Uh, have a good day sport and light tackle. Now, I'm using the three pound Tesco rods. Possibly a little bit overkill for this small water, really, but it's nice to have that little bit of backbone. Uh, I may use my little nine foot, two and three quarter pound Tesco rods next time. Um, my little Rovex ones, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased. I can under on cast to the far bank, which isn't too, you can see it's not too wide. It's, it's just so lovely here. The wildlife, I see loads of little robins. I haven't seen a kingfisher yet. I did see one last year when I was walking around. Uh, just loads of wildlife, different ducks and birds and squirrels and that, it's just it's so nice. The only thing, I like to know this civilization not too far away, which there is. But there's a college behind us and they're so noisy. Um, all you can hear is them screaming chatting. It's like a school. When you hear school kids, you can hear them probably doing whatever it is they do. Games. Don't know what they call it now. We used to call it games. P P E. I don't know, I don't know what they're doing, but I can hear them playing football and running around and stuff. But um so nice here. Just it's well worth the money. It's a lot of money, but it's well worth my own little bit of paradise with twenty odd anglers so much room midweek ticket i should have really come up here in the summer and done some carp and catfishing which i never got around to a little bit gutted for it half of it was my own laziness of not coming but half of it was chores work and uh, health my health is slowly building up my legs you know they're not going to be my legs are never going to be 100 percent. i don't think even when i lose the weight but i am building up the strength in my legs the last few weeks uh, on my night shift, uh, one night a week I do a little bit of walking in my own time uh, when I patrol a different building to the main building we usually patrol and uh, my knees are starting to, uh, I'm not going to say strengthen but the first walk, the first day I did it, I did 8,000 steps and this week I've done 7,000 so I've improved by 1,000 um, I'm over the moon with that but I am in a lot of agony still and I am pushing myself but walking from the bus up this morning wasn't too much of a chore, even with the gear that I was carrying. But I know I'll probably suffer for it in the next couple of days. So I've really got to be careful about how much I can push myself at the moment. Um, 
I was planning on getting a cab, but I wanted to see how, how far I can push myself today carrying gear because I've also brought the chair with me. Um, and I'll take you through a little, I'll take you for a little walk around the swim now. Okay, so let me show you the swim while we're here. So this is a double swim. Uh, there's my chair just there. This is a double swim. Oh, one, one rod over there. So this is my first rod. This is the sardine rod. It's just out in front of me. I don't want to come too close to this tree because I think there's a snag there. So just out in front of me there, I've got it. And it's ledgered on the bottom as a float ledger. I mean, it's so pretty. This water is so pretty. It's a bit coloured, the water. It's absolutely beautiful. The swims are lovely as well. Uh, imagine in the summer. They're not too bad. Even when they're wet, they're not too bad to walk on. I ain't got fishing trainers on or anything like that. You've got these railings behind as well, which are handy just to hang things like keep you know sacks on there or wet hand hooking mats to dry off and they just come in really handy really if you put a bit of tarpaulin over the back you probably make yourself a bit of a windbreaker but the swims are absolutely lovely so this is one swim uh, this is the other so if there was two of you wanting to fish together not that any of you guys can but say for instance me and another member uh, we can just do that that's my second swim my right hand swim this one I'm fishing up in the water on the other side. You can probably just make out the float on the other side. Now, the gentleman who's, who I was talking about earlier is just fishing now. On the other side, there's no swims, so you can fish against that feature, but you don't want to go too deep on there, just in case it snags. It's a very snaggy looking type of water, and like I, I said, I am very new here. So, until I found out where all the snags are. I believe that the swims have actually got names, but I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm new to it. I haven't. I've, I don't know the names. So I'm probably sure I'm going to learn them at some point. But you can see it's an absolutely pretty lake. Now, just down there, if you can see, there's a river that actually runs in. The river that lives goes right past my house and comes from the ponds. Actually, comes through this lake. So it's actually spring fed. So I believe the reason why I call it a monastery is because that I believe is an old church. Um, and this history of this lake was that the, the monks put carp in here two, three hundred years ago uh, for food source. So it's a very old lake. You know, it's been here for hundreds of years. So it's unbelievable. So a gentleman's just fishing over there. He's got two pipe rods out. Uh, this is another swim. I'm probably going to put a rod down here a little bit later. I'm going to stay here for the whole day. Put a rod down there later on for the last hour. See if I can pinch one off the, the end of that tree. Um, yeah, there's a little bridge around the corner. This is like the second swim on this part of the lake. Now, this is all, all sort of the same width all the way up. Goes up probably another 100 yards. And then uh, it goes into a big bowl. And it's got an island in the middle. There's plenty of swims quite comfortable especially for the fact there's only 25 anglers as you can see there's my swim where I've got my gear and there's that that fence and as I told you pine really handy so you can hang stuff on it <laughs> and I'm just sitting here watching watching me tablet <laughs> to make myself comfortable so this is where I've obviously because I've got a really bad back and knees I put my phone on now when I'm filming myself taking photos What's really good about modern cameras and phones and stuff like that, you've got voice activation. So I can talk while I'm holding a fish, I can say cheese, and it starts filming or it starts taking photos. Um, my new luggage, you may have seen, which is a Denim Super Specialist luggage. I really like it. One complaint, really, is on the quiver holder, which I've just showed you, the straps not as long. <laughs> it goes over my neck. So I can have it sort of across my across my shoulder. Problem is, it's it, I wish it had a longer strap to do that. But yeah, so I've got my tablet, as you can see <laughs> in the reflection. Hello, um, I'm just uh, watching a bit of. Well, that was watching scum actually, <laughs> and now I've got the 40 litre rack sack. Like I say, I've got the quiver, the unhooking mat, uh, 10 foot sleeves. I'll probably get some 12 foot sleeves as well for my longer rods. Uh, and it's the first time I've had a quiver for quite a while. Unhooking tools, 
dead bait, scales, some pineapple juice. I've got some sandwiches as well uh, that I made. Yeah, and I'm, I'm well pleased. So, absolutely fantastic little place. So, I thought I'd show you around uh, my swim. There's a little port -a as well if I need to use a toilet, which is really handy because one of the big things for me when I, I've got very, I don't know if I've got IBS, but I've got a very bad irritable bowel. Not that you guys probably want to know that, but I get very worried when I go fishing places where there's no toilets. Uh, hence the reason you probably know about the bucket, the seat bucket I, I take with me. <laughs> um, there's nothing shy about talking about going to number two nowadays, seat buckets and things like that. I mean, you've got Ridge Monkey, which make their own... Uh, toilet seats now they go on their own bucket so and you people buy port to lose and so on and so forth but going back to what i was saying earlier on about fishing here i wish i'd have come here in the summer and done some cat fishing the uh the bailiff uh fella really nice guy he's had quite a few big catfish out of here there's i believe there's only four he told me last year when we walked around the biggest one was 37 but he's had two 40s already uh, and the biggest is 52 this year so they've obviously put on some weight there's loads of silvers in here. Uh, they catch loads. I think they had a match yesterday. And the bailiff, when I texted him this morning, because uh, they changed the, the gate code, which I wasn't informed by accident. They probably forgot to tell me. Um, he texted me back, giving me the code. But he also said that two, because you know I'm interested in the perch as well, that two perch yesterday come out, one and a half and two pounder. Uh, last year he told me there was some freeze in here, which even more whetted my appetite because I don't really have a perch water near me and to know that I can come catfishing here, perch fishing, uh, I can catch silvers, the only thing it doesn't have I don't think is tench, I think all the catfish at the tench, we've got catfish in here, you've got eels, you've got some beautiful carp that I can fish for uh, with my little scope set up, I mean I could probably use scope up here for my piking if I wanted to but you know I like to have different tackle for different scenarios but I thought I'd give you a little look now this place is called it's got its own name but i'm not calling it by its name for those of you that live near me or know where i live you'll know that this place is not called that it has got a name but i have nicknamed it the monastery due to the fact it's got the church i think that's an app name for it um if i had this lake and it was my lake i'd probably call it the monastery anyway i think that's a, quite a nice little name for it but like i say the members i've spoke to so far um uh, uh, been really nice and I feel really relaxed and at, at ease here if I fish up on the ponds there's nothing wrong up the ponds uh, you know I don't scare very easy um, but you do get the odd knobhead up there you know piss head uh, the odd unsavory character you can get some nice people up there as well but the dog walkers are probably the biggest pain although you get some nice ones they the, the way they they look down at you and treat anglers like we're all a bit of scum you know which really annoys me because they just let their dogs jump all over your swim even and jump all over you and nick their food, nick your fish, your baits, that kind of thing. If I had a dog, I would never allow it to behave that way, but that's my little rant about dogs. I love dogs, but I wish there were some more responsible owners. But then I can say that about anglers. I wish there was more responsible anglers as well. But anyway, that's enough of me. I thought I'd show you my swim, show you the... Show you the um, the monastery long may i continue coming up here really i don't know when i'll next be up here knowing what i know about the perch now uh, it's really made me uh, wet me appetite to get up here with uh, some prongs and some worms and maggots and maybe give it another go trying to catch some live baits <laughs> and not end up catching decent roach anyway let's chill out watch some more of my movie have something to eat it's a really nice warm day now. It was a bit cold this morning, but it's really warm. Like I say, I'm going to be here till the end of the day, till dark. Let's see what happens. See if we can bag a few more fish.
What's up, peeps? So, yeah, um, just gone one o'clock and I've uh, just been to Ablusions, which is really, really nice. Not the actual Ablusions itself, it's a portaloo. <laughs> Nothing's nice about portaloos, but it's really nice. I don't have to worry about toilets. Um, uh, what's happened since last update? So, I've changed my rods around. I've literally gone to the toilet, I've just come back. I moved my left hand rod, the sardine rod, into the centre and then I moved my rod that was originally there to the right hand side so basically I've shifted, I'm in the same swim but there's three swims or three areas you can fish within this swim and I've shifted them to the right more because um, I want to ex explore this tree down the right hand side which I may have spoke about a little bit earlier on so because it's just gone one I've got a couple of hours left of light that's exactly what I'm going to focus on um, I haven't fished it as of yet. That's the beauty of this swim. I've, I cover a lot of water in front of me. It's only a small water, but I cover a lot. Uh, a couple of, that's, that's the sort of type of fishing that I like doing. I like to have command a bit of water out in front of me and then move the rods accordingly when I see fit to, to move them. Uh, and what that does is you cover a lot of water without actually having to move. You could call it the lazy way of fishing. I call it being smart. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I could certainly cover the whole of this lake within a day if I, if my legs and my back permitted me to do so. But um, that's not the sort of piking I like to do. I like to do it step by step, bit by bit, and I like to cover the whole water in front of me, set up my stall, so to speak, set my stall out, um, and then sort of work from that, really. What has been nice, you probably can hear loads of noise by me. It's uh, There's a load of people, college behind me. Um, Thankfully they can't see in and we can't see it. I can see out vaguely, but they can't see in here. Um, so yeah, basically, um, it's been fairly successful, I suppose, so far. Um, it'd be nicer to finish on a fish, so at least have one more fish. Um, I'm edging my bets. Just keeping my eye on the floats. Um, the one that's on the right-hand side, um, that's sort of close in to a tree. Maybe I'll show you that a bit later. And then the sardine one, which was close in on the far left, is now in the centre, and it's now been cast to the other side of the lake. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it there, to be honest. I may have another recast on that and pull it a little bit, a little central, so it's dead in front of me, because I have cast it to the, to the left a little bit more. Um, as you can see, the weather's really nice. I've actually got short sleeves on now. So I'm sitting here in a polo shirt. It was really cold earlier on, but I knew that the temperature would go up to 13, 14 degrees today. Uh, just watching loads of little silverfish skipping along the water. I really must come up here to catch live bait and also to have a float session anyway in general, especially for perch. Um, speaking of perch, the owner, not the owner, well, the bailiff um, came man, saw me earlier on. Um, had a nice chat with me. Uh, I didn't realise that he was actually fishing on the lake today. He, he must have sort of snuck in around the back way and done a couple of hours down the bottom and sort of come say goodbye to me before he left. And it was really nice catching up with him. Uh, he's a really nice fella. I don't really want to say his name on camera, not at the moment anyway, um, because like I say, and I may have mentioned it earlier on, this lake, although it's, it's an enclosed water, it means it's a syndicate water that's enclosed off um, publicity wise he wants me to not name it which is fair enough um, I'm gonna abide by that hence the reason I have gave it a, a different name as I said to you earlier on and as you can see in the title the monastery I think that's an apt name considering this is an old uh, uh, pit where they used to keep uh, carp the monks used to keep the carp in uh, and there's a little church just in front of me it's really nice I've seen the kingfisher by the way uh, which is really really nice. This apparently is a pair of them in here and I've seen the kingfisher on the far bank um, Hunting for his food uh, at some point. I'd love to catch it on camera um, So when I finally get my SLR um, And I'll bring the uh, camcorder up. Hopefully I can get some footage of that But so far so so good. I'm gonna say, you know, it's only been two fish three bites um, But I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful never on dead baits like I say, if I think I had lures, which I know I'm not allowed to fish, um, I would have cleaned up, and I certainly would have cleaned up if I had live bait on as well. But that's all one for the future, the live baits. Um, yeah, again, as I was talking to the bailiff, he was telling me about what's caught, what's in here, 
it's really nice to get that little bit of insight to give me a little bit of knowledge to, to work on um, I've really so, told you what you said about the pike there is a 14 pound a court a few years back um, this it's just untapped no one really knows what's in here uh, the biggest one to come out of recent is a seven pounder and I've already had an eight three eight four sorry so it's it's, it's looking good um, I think the next target really is a double um, but it's really strange because I think there's a big old girl in here. There's definitely, definitely a, um, a this. There's got to be an upper double or at least a twenty. So he thinks. But that's the whole point of him being a bit excited about me being here as a predator, a through and through predator angler, with a lot of experience. Hopefully, I can winkle one out. Um, not just to show the lake and the, the the owners that there's actually one here, but obviously for myself as well, because my biggest is not very big. 16 14 but it'd be really nice to, to have a 20 or a bigger pb i think i think 21 years of pike angling uh, i deserve it some of you pike anglers out there are probably shaking your head thinking oh my god is that the biggest you've had and like i said size doesn't matter to me i've had hundreds hundreds of pike over the years not of recent years the last three years has been a bit naff but um yeah i've had uh, hundreds hundreds of pike so you get a lot of experience from that just uh unfortunate i've not I've not had anything big. It's just, just the way of it, really. Really, uh, really excited about catfishing here next year. Uh, the catfish are gaining incredible weight. He was telling me that um, last year when I was walking around the lake and I was uh, speaking to him, and he was sort of, you know, where you do your induction visit sort of thing, and he told me that um, 37 was the biggest. But he's had. Like I said, may have said in this blog, I can't quite remember. If I keep repeating myself, I do apologise. But he's had a, um, he's had a forty and a fifty this year, and he reckons it one of them may be a, a sixty possibly as a possibility. Uh, certainly, maybe next year. He told me that there was lots of silvers last year, but there's not as many. He's seen a few, but and a few have come out, and you see loads scattering on the surface, but. When they netted it a few years ago, he said there was hundreds of silver, hundreds of thousands of silvers, but not as many. Um, so we don't know if the cats are hoovering them up because the carp anglers don't stove the bait in it. It's a small water. They use very high concentrated bait. So, but yeah, I mean, it is the uh, the monastery pike diaries, but I thought being the first uh, trip, I'd make this a slightly longer video possibly. Uh, I don't know how long it'll come out. But just giving you the information of the lake. And at some point, I will walk around in the next few months. I'll walk around the whole lake and show you different swims and that. But the deepest part of the lake is the, far, the first part of the lake, which is actually what I like the most, actually. So I am going to focus around for the next few sessions, probably around this side of the lake. This or the other side, but around this end of the lake, shall I say. Um, I'm also close to the toilets, and I'm not too far from the gate as well. I'm thinking of actually getting myself a trolley, um, a fishing trolley, so I can put my bag and my chair on and then just put my rod holder over my arm and then that way I can pull it with me and it's a lot easier than sort of carrying it. So I'm thinking of doing that, getting myself a little fishing trolley. Nothing big, nothing major, just so I can get on public transport with it. People get on there all the time with buggies, prams and and um, and what those those little shopping trolleys. So there's nothing wrong, I suppose, with me getting one of those. I tend to go early in the morning so there's not many people on the buses that time in the morning and obviously I leave obviously when people are finished um, school and finish work and that and that's when I leave to go home I will be getting the cab odd cab here from time to time especially when it's really cold or if I want to bring a lot of equipment and I want to do overnighters with me so yeah really really excited for things to come but I think that's enough for me for now as I do keep talking uh, it's probably going to be a fairly long vlog, as I said, because it is the first session. And um, if I don't catch anything uh, in the meantime, I mean, it's only about two or three hours left, maybe four hours left. Um, I'm going to sit and watch another movie. I'll, um, I'll keep you informed if I catch another fish. If not, it'll be a conclusion at the end of the day, just before I leave. Catch right, folks, folks, it's that time of day now. Uh, sun's gone behind the trees. The temperature's dropped dramatically. Uh, it was really warm earlier on for a couple of hours, and I even dozed off for, for half an hour. 
Um, the lakes come alive, loads of little small fish are jumping everywhere, toppling everywhere. And uh, fine true style, where I've not been out for so long piking on my own, especially bait fishing for pike, I decided to not only spend the whole day, but set it out till I can't see my floats no more. Um, I reckon there's another 20 minutes of light left, and then that's it. Um, like I say, it's been a very enjoyable trip. My first trip to uh, my club water, which I've been promising to do. Uh, and it's been fantastic. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, first episode of uh, the Monastery Lake Piking Diaries. Again, like I said, I will be up here and I will be doing some purchasing as well. So you'll have that thrown into the mix. Uh, nine out of ten times when I do come up here for the perch, I'll more than likely bring a pike rod with me as well. But um, yeah, been really, really enjoyable. I'm the last person on the lake. Everyone's left now. Uh, there was a few other people on throughout the day. Sorry if the camera's a little bit shaky. It's just that I'm really cold now. <laughs> um, funny incident happened actually probably, I don't know, an hour ago. I'm sitting here watching... Uh, watching the tablet, watching a film, a movie, and um, just behind me, I don't know if you can see, is that a big branch behind me? That literally fell from the trees above. So you've got the trees above, and it's like a rotten piece of wood. Absolutely crazy, I'll tell you what, I absolutely <laughs> crapped myself basically, and <laughs> literally pooed myself. And it's uh, scary. Now, the whole reason why I've filmed the way I filmed, I've just used my camera to the, uh, my phone today. I didn't bring any camcorder, I didn't bring any GoPro, and I will bring those in the future. But the whole point of doing this whole series, um, this new series I'm doing, is to sort of film it vlog style, really. Pretty similar to what I do anyway. But when you're using like a selfie style way of filming as I am now, um, that's the whole point of doing it. Next time, I don't know what I'll do. I'll maybe live bait next time out. Um, I don't know when I'll be back actually, maybe next week. I can't see that happening. I've still got some, some work to do, uh, finishing off my pike floats and I've got some chores to do. Um, I am off in a couple of weeks time. I've got, couple of weeks off uh, well I'll say a couple of weeks I got well just under two weeks ten days I got so uh, I'll be going away I'm gonna go and see my friend Dan and do a little bit of fishing Dan in uh, Hastings way with him which is gonna be really enjoyable I'm looking forward to um, I don't know what we're gonna be doing possibly a little fishing possibly dead baiting I don't know yet we need to talk on the phone and work out exactly what we're gonna do um, like I say, I did enjoy today, um, but it's taking its toll a little bit now, I ain't gonna lie. I've done a fair bit of walking, my back's hurting a little bit. I've got up and I've done a bit of walking around the swim, so I'm not just sat on my chair all day. Um, it's getting a bit cold now. As much as I complain about the summer, and I, I do like the winter because of obviously the piking, um, I do feel the cold as well. I am wrapped up, hoodies and coat and gloves and sort of hat, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode, like I say, um, a lot of it's talking, but then that's the whole point of vlogging, isn't it? And hopefully next time I'll probably catch you some runs, some actual uh, runs from, uh, from the fish themselves on the floats and that, so you get to see me plan the fish with any luck. That's if I get another fish next next session. Um, I'll probably be out with the floats, like I say, maybe live baiting and maybe have one out on the dead bait. Um, and as the winter month starts to come in and, and the fish are not up in the water, you know, I, I caught one up in the water and one on the bottom. When it gets a bit cold and the pike starts to lay up and they're just all sort of venturing along the bottom. You know, the deepest part of the lake's only five foot where I'm fishing now. Then I'll probably bring the alarms out and start using uh, drop back indicators and start ledgering 
maybe one on the bottom and one popped up. That's probably the way I'm going to go as it starts to get colder. Yeah, apart from that, I just want to say, once again, <laughs> I keep getting sidetracked. Side, sidetracked, is that the word? Um, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. It's been a while. And um, if you've enjoyed it, like I say, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe um, on this channel. You know, the support really does go a long way. Like I say, I know I haven't been out fishing and I really do apologise for that, but I'm hoping that I can start to put a few more sessions together. I don't think I'm going to be uploading every week, but if I can get two, if I can get two videos out a month, uh, as well as some tackle making and some product reviews and just putting a bit more content on the uh, on the channel, really, because it has been lacking of late, shall we say? Um, so yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the share the uh, video. Uh, I appreciate that, you know. It's a bit. It's going to be a bit of a journey. Hopefully, we can uh, find ourselves a big old girl, and I'm really, really looking forward to see what the secrets this lake holds uh, for the pike for the next six months, as well as other little hidden gems as well. Head over to my Facebook page because I'm on Facebook, and that's where I do most of my uploading. Uh, I've started to use Instagram a bit more now as well to post up photos and just to let people know on the Instagram stories what's going on which I'll probably start using the YouTube stories as well. So I am a uh, constant, although I don't make many videos lately, I, uh, I am constant on uh, social media. So just type in uh, Google London Predator Angler and all my, uh, all my pages will come up. Or you can follow the links in the description. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. And I'll catch you all on the bank next time. Tight line and dead baits. I'll see you soon.